Okay, this should be a good one. First matchup of the day, Dante versus Buck. Uh... Both from the UK. Both from the UK. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I don't know how to edit that part of it. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that that was a thing. It's not good. We got it's, the crying right, right, man. We'll, we'll take all the names we can. It's not a problem. <laughs> uh, yeah. Real interesting matchup. Martial Law and Buck. Like I said, I only known him to play Geese. I haven't seen him play any other character any time I've seen him play. Dante messed around with a few characters, but a Martial Law or a Law Specialist in general because I knew him originally from Tekken Tag Tournament 2 where he played Double Laws. So, character specialist for sure. 100%. Yeah. Uh, what Dante is really known for is, you know, they he completely took over the move of the right uppercut. They call it now the down forward Tay. <laughs> Love throwing that move out. My uh, goodness. Yeah. Back during Tech and Tech 2 days, he used to cap kind of like a wild style, but he's really calmed down. Uh, yeah, over I was the years. gonna say, like, from what we're seeing now, just very precise poking, getting his punishes in, just playing a very safe, precise game here, and takes the first round for it. Yeah, uh, quick slide right there, that's the execution I was talking about earlier. Yeah, he doesn't really take too many risks until, you know, it really gets down to the nitty gritty at the end of a match. Oh, they, you were warning us about it, the, the down forte. <laughs> yeah, he almost uses it like like a kind of shield what? almost, just kind of keep you out. Yeah, no, I know exactly what you mean. Because, um, you know, like, Lei can play very similar. So, yeah, I know exactly the type of style you're talking about. <laughs> oh, my goodness, the Hail Mary. <laughs> yeah. And like I was saying earlier, just about when it comes down to the ends of a round, he's 100% willing to throw out the more punishable moves if he believes they'll hit. And oh my <laughs> goodness, what a bait! My uh, goodness. What did I I've say earlier? That one before. <laughs> I've seen that one before, yeah, 100%. I think you're looking to bait our jump slide. Now, what was really crazy there is Buck was working on a perfect, and he got hit twice. He got hit with one down, two, three, <laughs> and a double flip, and he lost the round for it. And hey man, that's Tekken 7 for you. You get, you, you know, you deal, you get some really good movement going. You got some momentum. You play it safe. You eat two launches and you're dead. <laughs> yeah. You know, don't get hit. <laughs> you get good, bro. Yeah, simple. <laughs> yeah. All right, Buck right here. Uh, Dante one round for closing out this match, but Buck does have two meters. But if he gets like launched once in the air, he's pretty much done. So he's got to be real careful here. All right, back three two go. into the max mode cancel gets blocked. Burns one old oh, rage drive connects. That's dead. Yeah, perfect spacing for the wall. Just enough for him to get that junkyard finisher, and three rounds straight for Dante there. Damn. Yeah, bit bit of a bit of a quick one. Bit of a steamroll, obviously. Uh, Buck definitely looking to work their way in, playing a lot more confidently as the rounds went. But you weren't kidding when Dante when when the nut stuff needs to come out, it comes out in spades. Uh, Did you say <laughs> the nut stuff? Yeah, the, hey, you is know, take it as a UK man. term? Uh, no, that's a bebop term. I'm patenting it. <laughs> All right, I but, like it, man. We're going to bring lots yeah, of nuts stuff know, today. It's, it's fine. It's fine. You know, you, you can borrow from the book of bop. <laughs> you know, it's not patented. But yeah. damn, what a first game. You know, I, I kind of hope that's sort of a sign of things to come for the rest of the set. Uh, you know, to be honest, I kind of want Buck, you know, I, I, too much. I, what would you say Buck could have done differently? Because I don't really think they placed a foot wrong. I think just uh, kind of... There was some really good bait uh, placed by Dante, obviously. Getting the openings in and making it work. So do you just think it was a case of uh, wrong place, wrong time? Or do you think Buck needs to tie up the game somehow? I think what it was, it, it boiled down to... Even though it was three rounds straight, uh, it was actually pretty competitive. I mean, there was one round where Buck was pretty much working on a perfect, mm. but... Uh, at the towards the end of the rounds, Buck just needs to tighten up, is what I'd say, because he has to start looking out for the down two threes, the flip kicks, and things like that, because those mm -hmm. will come out of nowhere. Dante is a hundred percent willing to throw those out. I don't know how familiar these players are with each other, but you know, adaptation is yeah. a uh, part of the game. Hundred percent, hundred percent, fighting games one hundred one. Yeah. So let's see if Buck can make the adjustments necessary. Hey, right now we have Dante playing his regular game. There's that now forte. Should be able to get the wall with this. Yeah, easy. Ooh. Obviously the wall just sucking him in a little bit, messing with the distance. Nice combo here from Buck. Double Rapukin. 
Ooh, great tech choice from Dante. Ooh, no duck on the 3-4 there. Things like that are key at this level of play. You need to be able to recognize, you know, the small gaps, the holes in uh, people's game plans and move selection. Yeah. Not sure how familiar Buck is with, like, uh, martial law this this level. No break on the 2-throw. Generic 2-throw at that. Yeah. Here we go. Just checking the shins of the size step 3 from Buck here. Dante is just looking very comfortable right now. He's just kind of throwing out whatever moves he wants. Even when he's like messing up the execution, we saw that messed up slide earlier. He's not really suffering for it. No, definitely not. Like, you know, I, I wouldn't say Dante's playing with his food, but he looks very comfortable right now. Just willing to throw out pokes, control the pace of the game. All right. And mm -hmm. he's as good as he is. I feel like if you're not trying to spend meter, his uh, move selection is very limited. So Buck has to work around that. A two rounds, well, I guess technically five rounds straight for Dante right yeah, here. Yeah, no, no. This is this is looking a little rough. Yeah, man. Buck is sitting pretty with two meters though. Let's see if he can make use of it. Ooh. Just again another miss execution on slide, but makes up for it with a perfect whiff punish. Very nicely done. Yeah, Dante just looks. Look at that wild standing Ooh, one too. Goodness. He just looks so in control right now. A neutral right. flip into the wild standing one two. Six rounds straight for Dante against Buck right now. My goodness gracious me, damn Dante! Oh shit! I'm not gonna lie, man. That was pretty clean. I, I don't think you could. I obviously like you know there was even execution errors on the side of Dante. You know. Um, there was a couple missed slide inputs, but all in all, other than that, stellar performance. Uh, you know, great poke play to control the space uh, and the timing of the game. Uh, excellent use of uh, mix-ups like we saw towards the end, utilizing the wall mix-up for the splat. And obviously the, the crazy Hail Marys when they were needed, but man, just can't really... Don't, not much more to say, really. Yeah, he was just looking too clean, too comfortable right there. Uh, basically, I feel like Buck just never got anything started. You know, there was no, there was no threat from him. It felt like, where you know, he at one point it just looked like he was just not sure what to do and just running around, do a couple down fours or something like that. So yeah, yeah. just wasn't able yeah. to get the momentum shift in his way. Yeah, it, it happens, man. Uh, obviously, yeah, because like you know, because you talk about the downfalls. Obviously, you could see like in the first couple rounds, you could see the game plan was to get the count hit at down four, try to get a bit more respect going in the neutral, uh, stop uh, Dante pressing any buttons, but didn't pan out, man. Yeah, unfortunately for Buck, that young will Buck. Put him... <laughs> yeah, the young Buck. <laughs> That will bring him down with one loss. Dante moves on with one win. And then up next, we're going to have Dongle Dingus versus Devil himself. Uh, right, I believe yeah. Dongle Dingus, like you said, is a Bob player. You know, uh, Bob, very big winner in Season 4 of Tekken 7, yes. I'd say, right? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, obviously, because um, uh, obviously one of the strings being uh, buffed to being safe on block now. Uh, was it down to Down to? I'm... My memory fades me. But, yeah, uh, that's one safe now, so you can yeah. just kind of throw it out. Yeah, obviously, um, has a hot kick now. Um, although, I'll be honest, uh, I haven't seen many competitive balls really utilize it yet. So I don't know whether there's much trust in the move. Maybe uh, the ball players are still ingrained with a way to play it. Um, but, you know, that said, you know, Bob's play style in a sense is taking a bit of a hit. Obviously, Hell Sweep taking a bit of a taking a bit a slight nerf obviously you know you can't really get the uh the vortex in aspect of it back um so obviously we have a very strong ball player over here in the uk ru kang uh, i have played against ru kang and yes he swell hell swept the crap out of him <laughs> yeah that's that's so, just ru kang the yeah. ru kang special so it, you know it, it's kind of strange because like it was a it was almost like a case study over here because you know bob a winner in the past like you said like you know Given, like, you know, really good buffs, a decent tool that, you know, people consider this pretty essential in uh, tech nowadays, you know, in, in terms of having a very good hop kick. But, you know, the way that Ru Kang likes to play Bob, you know, he wasn't convinced. He said, you know, with the Hell Sweet nerf, you know, you know, Bob's not bad by any stretch, but definitely, you know, people still need to really consider that 
Bob Reed doesn't have much of the mind games anymore in that aspect. So, you know, you've got to tweak around, obviously, if you've got a certain way of playing with Bob, back to the drawing board. I definitely think it's uh, one of those things where the way you can look at it depends on what you value in a character, right? So if you're valuing aggression and things like that, then yeah, that Hell Sweep nerf hurts a lot. But if you value blocking and punishing, then Bob is like far superior to Season 3 Bob, right? Just so you so know, I'm fellas, here. the reason why we're holding on is because Devil himself is still playing his first round match. As soon as he's complete with that, we'll proceed with round two. So that'll be uh, him, De Devil himself versus Dongo Dingus, the one we have coming up. I mean, that's a pretty close match then. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Probably. Looking forward. All right. Uh, Devil himself, funnily enough, I we started around the same time. I think he might have started a little earlier than me around the Tekken 5 DR days. I started in Tekken 6.0 in arcades. Oh, wow. Uh, I knew him as being a Nina player, but I think in Tekken 7, he's been mainly focused on Xiaoyu. Yes. <laughs> um... I believe, um, uh, who else did I, I think he messed around with Jin a little bit as well, didn't he? Uh, it's very possible. He, <laughs> he's one of those players that, you know, tends to jump around. Yeah, play, plays whoever he wants. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, plays whoever th he thinks is gonna, you know, give him that W. Of course, yeah. Right. I mean, just a competitive player, you know? I mean, yeah, yeah. character loyalty only gets you so far, my friend. Yeah, so, uh, you know, he was around when we were playing 7.0 in arcades here in New York. So, back then, he was using... Josie, I think it was, wasn't it? Maybe some Josie. And yeah. Just jumping around a little bit. But I think, you know, during 7.0, Nina was pretty... Kind of a problem herself, so... Yeah, pretty tasty. Yeah, yeah definitely. And then, uh, sorry. And so was Ling. And then Ling was a big issue, so I think he really... <laughs> he really enjoyed playing Ling. Yeah, hundred percent. You think we're gonna see the the Ling buffs come into play now? Obviously, people uh, shouting from the heavens. Ling has one of the best low pokes in the game now. Oh, you're talking about the new uh, down back two yeah. that leaves turn to leaves back, back turned. Right? Yeah, right. Uh, very possible. Uh, if you ask uh, certain players from our region, they will say Devil himself loves to play with his gimmicks. <laughs> you know, so. Ling, hey, man, I'm all for it. Very strong with it, yeah. See, if you want to play with some gimmicks, this is the right character. Damn. Got her all dressed up for the occasion too, huh? <laughs> I mean, you know, Bob's looking pretty sharp himself. Yeah, so we got Devil himself on 1P versus Donkle Dingus on 2P. There we go. I swapped it for you fellas. Enjoy. <laughs> oh, there we go. Count hit Orbital. And this should be Valkyrie, but ooh, didn't like the angling. Good call. Yeah, went straight for the Okazemi instead. Not sure how familiar Dongle Dingus is with the Xiaoyu matchup, but I think Bob actually fares okay in this matchup. Yeah, definitely has very good options to deal with AOP, so obviously shouldn't really be respecting it too much. Oh, great side mover from Dongle Dingus, but then Devil himself taking the turn back, controlling the neutral again. Yeah, I mean, Devil's definitely going to be looking for the Oki situations, the 50-50 mix-up situations. Nice little sidewalk right there. Couldn't get anything out of it, though. Ooh, trade in favor of Dongle Dingus. Yeah, not too bad for either side, but this is... Ooh, no. <laughs> oh, great Oki option from Dongle. Very nicely played. Yeah, nice clean down back three low poke to finish that round right there. Yeah, don't risk it all if you don't need to. Yo, I've never noticed Bob's kicks in this preset, and they are ugly as hell. <laughs> <laughs> There's somewhat to be desired in terms of the animation. Oh, there we go. Condition for the hop kick. Very nicely done. Taking him downstairs. Big damage. Yeah, I already used the tailspin there to break the balcony. That's like one of the things you really try to avoid in Tekken 7. You know, you try to find a move that breaks the wall without using up your spin. And so it's yeah. kind of coming to bite him in the butt right here. But has the rage into the rage Ooh. drive right here. That might be it if he does the right combo into the guaranteed. Marvelous. Perfectly <laughs> placed. Great punish leading to the rage drive opportunity. Nicely played. Damn. I mean, you weren't kidding. Devil himself knows how to play Ling. Who knew? Yeah. I mean, he likes to run around. He likes to press buttons. So 
<laughs> Looks like it's working out right here, but you know what? Well, I mean, that that got, oh my got something God. to say, man. That back to in damage into the fake hell sweep. All right, we're going to final round in the first match. All right, counter Ooh. hit. Yeah, drops it, unfortunately. Yeah, but gets this little conversion right here to the wall. Boom, Storming Flower Ender. Yeah, Dongle Din is one of those bot players that really seems to like back to too, and I've been playing this game against Bob for like over 10 years. I still, I'm not ducking back to two every time. <laughs> that makes me feel so yeah. much better, you know, that you said that. Yeah, it's definitely, like you said, it's definitely one of those corners, uh, cornerstone strings you really need to be dealing with to kind of take it away from his toolkit. And there is the down mark three to seal the deal. Yeah, uh, competitive first match yeah. there between the two. Uh, Devil definitely showing signs of life right there that could have gone either way. Uh, when, you know, Ling Xiaoyu Tekken 7, 50-50s everywhere. But Donald Ding has got the better of it. I like the way he was kind of controlling the pacing a little bit. He was like, all right, you want to play fast? We can play fast. I'll throw out these back twos. You want to turn your back to me? I'll throw out more of these back twos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, see I'm seeing a trend here. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah no, definitely. Um, Donk you could definitely see there was a lot of adaptation on Donald Dingus' side. Um, like you said, obviously, Devil himself playing a very comfortable fishing out with the strings, getting the conditioning in, getting hop kicks. We saw a few back to hop kicks as well. Um, you know, not too much in terms of gimmicks from, from Zhao Yu. Obviously, a pretty clean round, a uh, clean game, all things considered. So it makes you wonder, are we are we going to take off the brakes and we're going to go the full 100 miles per hour here? Yeah, in New York, we call that going ham. Going go hard, as, yeah, hard as a mother. So <laughs> we'll see if he can, you know, really, you know, floor it right here and start put him, picking up the pace. All right, going right into this little elevator stage. Pretty first stage, I think. A little yeah, tight. Uh, yeah, it's just, just obviously a bit awkward. Need a bit of um, awareness, obviously. Octagonal stage is a bit strange in this game. I mean, Tekken's been one, always been one of those games, right, where you have to account for how weird the wall can be. And it can be really impressive when people know the appropriate combos for like those really awkward angles. And, oh, great option from Dell himself. Go into the manual AOP. <laughs> yeah, manual AOP goes right under that move. One of the most evasive properties in the game. Here we go. Big count hit and gets the round. Nice conversion, Devil himself. Taking the round very clean. All right, nice confirm on the Cracker Jack right there from Dongle. Double himself. Jumping around a little bit. Ooh, gets <laughs> sniped yeah, out the air. Nice. Stop jumping around. I know, this is no anime game. Get out of the air, girl. <laughs> yeah, no air dashing here. Right into the back turn mix-ups. Not scared to go for these risky lows. Oh my god. Clipped Ooh, him out of the that... air of the Ray Drive. No blue stuff here. My god, that could have gone either way. I mean... I know Devil himself took that round, but if I was him, my heart would be beating just a lot, a little bit faster. Great low parry, nice awareness. Alright, get some all the way to the wall here, nice damage. Alright, Devil himself looking really clean right now in this match. Yeah, very strong. Oh, that should be it. Alright, nice sidestep low there, counter hit into the full combo. Big turnaround from what we saw in the first match. I Definitely. <laughs> yeah, no, I 100% I agree. Obviously, um, you know, because the keyword you've been using is obviously have the games been competitive. That was definitely a lot less competitive that time round. Um, obviously, in the second round, there was the duel of the running three versus the blue stuff. Um, but still, other than that, I mean, Dev himself played that so offensively. Very, ball was very much in his court from start to finish. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what kind of adaptation we're going to get from Dingus here. And it is right. his name, everyone. I'm not being mean. So before you <laughs> accuse me of e-bullying, that is his name. Yeah, it looked like Devil was just like, you know what? Um, I don't think me trying to block and run away is going to really work out. So I'm just going to keep, I'm going to put the pressure up, start mixing you up some more. And it really worked out for him. He was willing to go for more of those back turn sweeps. That really helped out 
uh, helped him gain the momentum a little bit. And then, you know, he could just run his mix-ups all day. Yeah, definitely. I mean, just play to the character strengths, which is yeah. really what you want to do. Yeah, 100%. All right, let's see what Doggle Ding is can do to adapt back to the pacing that Devil himself has chosen. Looks like Doggle chose last day on Earth. That's pretty rare, I yeah. think. I don't know about over there, but over here, that's not a very popular stage. Uh, no, like we see it quite often over here. Um, oh, you really? know, because yeah, we we have, we got quite a few uh, carry uh, carry characters involved here. It's obviously, a couple of lead players, so you tend to see some of the longer stages in play. The only times I see people usually pick the stage are is from Negan mains. <laughs> Just for the buff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Whatever helps night you get night. through the day. 100% well, whatever helps you sleep at night. <laughs> Ooh, awkward interaction. Doesn't get the conversion. Very unfortunate. Punish from Dongle Dingus. Gets parried. Nice headbutt belly right there. Oh, oh my god, that's, that's gonna him, kill him. for sure, yeah. And that will be the first Rage Art of the day, I think? Yes. <laughs> At least the Rage Art yeah. of the day. Yeah. Let's hope it's not the last. <laughs> Alright, this will get him into that corner right here. Nice little wall combo. Doesn't yeah. go for like the usual Oki Ender, which I think is interesting. Nah, look, look at it going for optimal damage there. Great okay. patience from Dongle Dingus. Parried again off the punish. Yeah, Bob does throw a lot of limbs at you. So I can't really blame him for going for these parries right here. Oh, you said it yourself. Great <laughs> stage awareness. Utilizing the corner. Very rare for this game. And nicely done. Taking the round with that clean splat. Fight. All right, Devil. Fishing for these Ooh. counter hit roof gifts. Oh, and the art of Phoenix <laughs> right under your move. You think, oh, he oh. went for the infinite. Bro, yeah, no, 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 Dingus is watched. I hope he's going to say about it. Uh, looks like Dingus is a big fan of this corner, though. It's been helping yeah, him out a lot. Get a lot of work out of it. Oh, get it out of here. Barely to take away the guessing games. Very nice choice. And the down for one float out the air. Nice little conversion there from Dingus. One round away from taking this match. Yeah. Obviously. Right, pressure's on the devil right now. All right, nice block on the AOP launcher. Oh, no break on the one plus two. Right to the wall, guaranteed down three plus four ender, which I think is ridiculous, but. <laughs> nice hey man, parry. someone, someone <laughs> out there saying he needs it. And, and the down one. The Looking coupe for that chop. down back three, <laughs> and then obviously getting tapped on the head like the good little girl that she is. <laughs> My goodness. I mean, I think we could both agree that was a good answer back from Dongle Dingus. What a set. What yeah, a that great is set. Definitely not how I would have predicted that last match going, especially considering how the second one went, right? Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> like um, like you were saying, because obviously Dev himself, you know, realized, okay, play, start, need to start playing a bit more safe, look in the, like, obviously in the first game, getting the block punishes in, getting the pokes, looking for whiff punish opportunities, just playing the space game. Going into the second game then, obviously, the bets were off, put going absolute ham, like you said yourself. Uh, just a lot of oppression. Oppression session from <laughs> Young Ling. AOP options, get in the schmicks. Um, so yeah, no, I mean, what a great turnaround, to be honest. I'll, I'll be honest, I, I'm in the boat as you. I didn't really expect the third game to go that way, but congrats to Dingus, I suppose. Kudos, sir, you, you <laughs> proved us wrong. I think something that actually really made a difference there was the stage pick actually which we which i was surprised Maybe. at yeah, yeah that little corner helped him out for two rounds and <laughs> you know it really did i mean i mean what's even funnier like you know you were saying yourself before you know it's not it's not often you see like these very intricate wall splats but when they do happen you've got character specialists or you know professionals at the game like make the most out of it it's really interesting to see and we had just that in the next game so i mean hey man you don't ask you don't get and we are blessed i suppose uh, but guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Obviously, if you've just tuned in, this is uh, the Lockdown League. Uh, 
hosted by NYC, are also brought to you by Team Spooky, also with the assistance of East London Fighters. And also, thanks again to Red Bull for the support as well to make this happen. Big shout outs to those guys there. Uh, there is a Moobot link going around, guys, so do check the chat window. I'm not sure if I point the right way, it's not important. Uh, so, yeah, check out the link, and they are Matrino codes. I believe the code is Lockdown EC1. Uh, so if you use that coupon code, you will get 50 cents for free. So you don't even need to put your own money down. How does that sound? How does that sound for support? You don't even need to put your own dollar. Yeah. Sounds good to me. All you do is type in that code and you can help support all these players that are, you know, providing some free entertainment to for you today. Exactly. I mean, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? I mean, I mean, Reno, you're the same as me. You know, when you put on a show... Like, you know, you, you want to be rewarded a bit. Like, you know, because like, I play Lay, I like the show about just that tad. <laughs> you know, I want something. I knew there was you know, something and, wrong with you. <laughs> I know. It's, 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 they always get it. They're like, hmm, there's, there's something I don't like about him. Yeah. I'm a filthy Lay man. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm sorry. But I'm not a very good one, so don't worry. <laughs> That's the scariest kind of Lay player. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of is, really. He just right. keeps using Hellspin. <laughs> it's fine. Um, right, so here we go. We got Dante here coming back in with the law pick, looking very strong right now. So we have Dante with his martial law versus Fang Wei. You know, with classic rich, martial yeah. arts. Fight. It, 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 it's a, it is a bit cliche, isn't it? I'm all for it. The classic yeah, yeah. kung fu matchup. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan. I mean, this is going to be a matchup you're going to be very familiar with. I mean, this matchup's like older than time itself, almost. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I do think it's kind of weird because it's kind of like I think Martial Law is a better character, but I think Fang might actually edge out this matchup a little bit, but not if he runs into that down forward Tay. Yeah, the, the down forward <laughs> Tay. Like you said, man, it's a shield. When it comes out, you either block it, there's nothing you can do about it, or you get hit. Ooh, the donkey kick coming out. Yeah. Uh, very peculiar move right there because it leaves him in uh, actual full crouch status, which is pretty weird. It's, it's the kind of a uh, move type of move that martial law has never had before a mid that leaves him crouched like that. So you can't punish it with jabs or anything. You actually have to do a 13 frame mid. However, yeah, Fang Wei has one of the best 13 frame mid punishers in the game. <laughs> Fight. That, is also that big uh, with that big shoulder right there. So we'll see if he actually ever pulls it out. Yeah, we didn't see earlier. I think we saw it down back three. <laughs> All right, nice launch here from B Witch. That's gonna get him to oh, the little that short. Was a shame. Even accounted for the wall too. Yeah, misjudged just a little bit there. Oh my Ooh, god! Random legend. Kick. I love it. <laughs> Spacing out a little bit right here, trying to play the neutral, yeah. the special martial art delayed hop kick. Oh, there's a four four three. Nice break on the throw. Getting a bit tight here for Dante. Really needs to make something happen. Nice. Closing it out with the down by three. A little risky there, right? Is launch punishable? I think if Dante had blocked and launched it, that might have been Dante's round. But 100%. You know. Obviously, in rage, rage art was an option. Yeah, but you got to do what you got to do. 100%. 100%. <laughs> and B Rich throwing out these 1 plus 2s a lot, trying to get the punch yeah. parry, but Dante's just kind of eating them raw. <laughs> He's not even yeah, getting no, parried. I Definitely rubbing his shins a little bit here. And another failed slide. Very unfortunate here. No, it is cold over here in the American East Coast, so maybe just can't a little. Yeah, little needs to rub his hands a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but B Rich looking pretty warm himself takes that first match. Mm, not super convincingly, but convincingly enough, I'd say. En enough, yeah, definitely. Proved he was the better man, as it were. Um, but yeah, I. It, so obviously you were saying earlier that you think um, Feng just edges Law out a little bit in the matchup. Do you think you go into a bit more detail? Do you? Because um, obviously it's not just going to be uh, the donkey kick punish. You know, there's going to be other aspects of the matchup that you're going to find favorable in terms of Feng. Right. Um, well, I mean, Martial Law is like a very legacy old school character, right? Like been there since Tekken One, and his whole game plan revolves around just a lot of quick highs. You know, his jab strings are really strong. His magic four is really strong. And Fang has a lot of great tools to kind of get around those things. He has up for two, which is, you know, the big sidestep uh, pokey yes. that gets around Full a lot gouge. of things. Yeah, very uh, frustrating. <laughs> yeah, he has a lot of quick lows that will beat highs and jabs. You know, he has down by three, 
which, you know, big counter hit buff that he got in season four. He has down two, yes. which is very safe. And he also has that one plus two that we saw B Rich throwing out a lot, which I feel like he was doing because of the matchup, where if he counters your punches, your jabs, he gets a full combo. So, little things like that. Of course. <laughs> but so, so it's safe to say, safe to say, B Rich familiar with the matchup there. I'd say so, but Dante is looking super clean right here. Just Definitely. I don't I mean, even really? know what happened. He hit him. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Damn, low parry off the bat. Big call out here from Dante. All right, just sure of the wall right here. These down four threes doing a ton of work for him. Going for all these Ooh, quick frame traps. Can... Nice one, one, two. Yeah, right into the run up throw and the stompy. Ooh. And man, Dante is looking very comfortable right here. Yeah. You know, most people would be thinking about adjustments after the last game. Not Dante, he's just coming in. Oh my goodness. Big launch punish. Yeah, I think this is where the experience kind of kicks in. This isn't even just about the character matchups anymore. This is just this Dante. Is a player matchup. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, this is Dante. He's just like, all right, I lost that first round pretty bad. I know what to do now. And I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Just oh like that, the pink off goodness. gets two no out of nowhere. Way. No way. Man's gonna get hit and <laughs> put in full crouch, and he's still gonna press. I respect it. I yeah. respect it. And that's what uh, old school term from the Japanese players for that was abare. We call it challenging over here in the States. Or, I mean, more recently now, we just call it mashing. But that yes. was a, that is what we say. That is a good match right there. You know, he got hit with down back three. He got put in the crouch. He was at negative frames, and he was just like, "Um, gonna uppercut you now, dude." Hey, man, it's it's as a legendary man himself once said. I don't know what plus frames are, but I operate on instinct. So, and that's what we saw just there. But I mean, you know, it's you know, it, it happens. You see it in every game. It's happened ever since fighting games have been a thing. You know, it's it's one of those instances. It hits, you're a genius. It gets blocked, you're a clown. You know, like. But at the at the end of the day, you don't know what Dante was thinking. At the end of the day, did it work? Yes. So I mean, it was a good choice. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yes, you said it earlier, man. You said it earlier, and it's it's paying dividends. Going back into this, man. We're having some really good sets here. This is the third set on street, and it's going down to the final game. Mm -hmm. Very close right now. I've seen huge momentum shifts, it feels like. Yeah, it's definitely we definitely got some pendulum games going here. Wow, nice mm. hop kick here to start out from B Rich. Gonna get him to the yeah. wall right here. Full wall combo. Yeah, I love what they did to this arena stage. I hope yeah, I hope it back. stays, man. <laughs> I know, I think everyone's the same. <laughs> Nice move here from Beerish, getting away from the jab. Nice break of the launching throw. Ooh, just missing the punish. Alright, nice block on the side set, 1 plus 2. Ooh, into Ooh. the last hit, 2 4 Sliver of life, <laughs> season 4 coming in. Ooh, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Checks the shins. Ooh, small whiff punish there. Dante working at a little bit of deficit, the double back one, classic Feng Wei. Yeah, 100%. You could see Dante was very hesitant at the back one, but still getting clipped. Doesn't matter though, stealing momentum right back. Ooh, fishing for that counter hit, but doesn't get it. Alright, <laughs> new season 4 setup right there, new move into the punch parry. Dante not biting though, nice forward 4. Here we go. Ooh, drop the combo. Very unfortunate. Yeah, shoulder. Keep it clean. Don't risk it. Oh, best race. Oh, no, in the that's game. two for two. Into the running low stop and the down oh, for one. Was it a 10 hit? Yes, it was. <laughs> Here we go. Generic down four. Start things off. And there it is. The patented. Right into the nice little clean wall combo into the Tiger Fang. Oh my god, shoulder out of nowhere. <laughs> shoulder, yeah. I mean, that's twice we've seen shoulder use his call out for flip. Oh! Yeah, that's also twice we saw Stomp. Stomp <laughs> out the get, round, get in so. the win at the wall, yeah. I mean, you're not wrong. 
Ooh, went for Okazemi under here. This is looking so different from the first match we saw. Yeah, definitely. There's, def a, there's a lot of counter hit fishing here. Getting the big buttons in neutral and just capitalizing on the Oki. Oh, shoulder whiff punish. Nicely done. Oh, the fish hook. Here we go. We go in the distance. All right, going final, final round right here. Anybody's game right here. I feel like either Dante's gonna either tighten up a lot or really oh. loosen up. Oh, oh, up those down forward Taze. Here we go. That should just bring us about even on the life lead. To go either here way go. right Green here. Option, get in the wall now. Obviously, Dante's got to work his way out. This is a bad place to be, <laughs> and there we go. The Dang. double down back three. You know what would have helped Dante out right there? If he threw out another one of those wild standing twos out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. I mean, you're not wrong. Damn, but GG's. GG's to both. The B-Rich, obviously, clutching out. I mean, like you said, there was a lot of adaptation and playstyle change throughout the three games. Not even, like, if you look at, like, the set as a whole. Um, it was broken up really, not and I feel like that's the only kind of play you'll get from veterans and like, you know, the highest level competitors. So I think you couldn't really go wrong in that set, to be honest. Yeah, that was a really surprising uh, game there as far as results go. I, I want to say that most people that are familiar with both players would have went Dante in that matchup. So good stuff to be rich for closing that out that way. Yeah, 100%. All right, looks like next up we're going to have Shin Paolo yeah. versus Devil himself. Um, Another one of the people's champs. Yeah. Hey, so uh, real Shin quick, guys, before we jump into this next one, I just want to remind everybody at home to please check out the Match Reno Crowdfund. You guys have been amazing with your support so far. Uh, thanks to all of you. We received over $25 and change. Thanks, everybody. Uh, there is still the free coupon code, like the commentary homies have mentioned, Lockdown EC1, so check that one out. Check out all the Twitter quests, the sponsor quests, and the goodies. They also put in some amazing stretch goals in there for you two to check out and enjoy. You can also check out the... Oh, now we're at $50. Thank you. Somebody contributed. Damn. Thank you, Lord Logan. Up. Thank you so much. We appreciate it at home, everybody. Enjoy the tournament, guys. I'm really busy helping out with everything at home, so the commentary <laughs> homies are holding you down. Make sure to follow them on Twitter if you're enjoying all they're talking to you about and enjoy the entire league. Damn, thank you everyone. To go from 25 to 50 in the space of a break, my goodness, <laughs> that's that's no small feat. Um, instant buff. But instant buff. Community buff. You love to see it. Um, but that said, I can't remember what we were discussing. <laughs> uh, oh, well, it happens. Uh, we were talking Shin Paolo. Yeah. Alright, Shin Paolo, one of the stronger players from the... Uh, well, uh, he's originally from the Northeast, but his skills have been honed everywhere. Uh, he plays a lot of the 2D characters, which is not too surprising mm. given his background as one of the stronger Killer Instinct players. From Interesting. When, yeah, from when that game was big, and then he switched over to Tekken 7. Um, he moved around quite a bit. I remember seeing him way back in the early days of Tekken 7. He was doing work at Wednesday Night Fights out in California on the opposite side of the States. Of course, yeah. Right. So, I'm Damn, interested so to well traveled. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, I'll be honest, I want to see Akuma. Like, I know a lot of, like, yeah, I mean, we all know it. Like, we all hate Akuma. We all hate playing against him. But, <laughs> by God, you just love to see people play against him. <laughs> I love but, seeing someone who's good against Akuma. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You know? And that's really entertaining to me. I mean, but Akuma produces so many great hype moments. I guess we, everyone's seen the clip. Uh, While well, the numerous clips of Super Akuma playing and coming back with, you know, two full meters. We've seen the Rixta versus Knee moment. Everyone knows that one as yes, well. Yes, <laughs> classic. Right? Pop off central. Yeah, how could we forget? And so, yeah, obviously. Um, and Shin Paul, um, there was a clip in the NYC versus UK. It was Risky Luck, Claudio uh, versus Shin Paolo's Akuma. And um, Shin Paolo, as a defensive read, used teleport to get out of hop kick, which I thought was just an absolute sick read. Went on to lose the game, unfortunately. But it was. But, <laughs> Why like, do you got to you know, bring it, that part up? <laughs> I mean, it, you know, national pride, man. You know, what can I say? But, um, you know, like, it's just, I kind of love because. 
everyone loves a character expert, you know. And I think 2D experts, they're just a different breed, you know, because like you said, obviously, he's got more of a 2D centered background. Um, but that said, you know, he's no slouch when it comes to Fakum Ram either. So, and, you know, you know how the, the, the tide blows these days. Most people nowadays tend to have a Fak. You know, it's just smart pick, like you said uh, <laughs> earlier. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing some 2D love, you know. Hmm, that's a pretty rare statement to hear nowadays. It, yeah, I mean, it is, goes. but, you know, variety is also the spice of life. You know, I'm sick of seeing Fak and Ram all the time. I'm not afraid to admit it. <laughs> I'm one of those rare cases, I'll admit, where even during, you know, later season three, I was like, you know what? I like both these characters. And by both these characters, I mean Fak and Ram and Leroy. I was like, I think they're mm -hmm. both cool characters. So I'll watch that matchup all day. But I know I'm a rare case. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> at least you know yeah at least you know yeah no yeah uh, i think the community sentiment isn't shared <laughs> but i know i know what you mean like is you know we've got some cool characters there's some really cool concepts um there's some really cool tools and there's even cool lore as well so you know obviously love for the characters is always good to see it's just obviously you know it it happens with all fighting games you know it, it'll you start seeing the same characters pop up over and over i mean it's just how it goes yeah i mean Top tiers are top tiers, they exist, and they won't stop existing. There's good characters nope. and bad characters in every fighting game. That's just the nature of the beast, I think. Yeah, no, 100%. And I'm, I'm telling you, man, even if you had the most balanced game on the planet, you would still see a tier list. I'm oh, telling yeah, you now, for sure. Right? It's a tier list in rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> <laughs> no, good old rock. <laughs> Nothing beats that, right? <laughs> exactly, all right. So we're getting into it. We're going to have Shinfalo playing Akuma versus Devil Themselves. Ling Xiao Yu. Uh, I think this should actually be a pretty interesting matchup. Yeah, because because things like that, you have yeah, AOP. like AOP and a fireball, hundred yeah. percent. Seeing how Ling can move around Akuma's gimmicks and Ooh, vice versa, they... the chase Man. down. Was that a read on the demon teleport? That would would have been sick if it was. I'd imagine these Ooh. two are a little bit familiar with each other. At least maybe pre-COVID, they've played a little bit off uh, offline. Oh my Ooh. god! Nice. Wall bounce. That was surgical with punishment. Wow. You just can't go wrong. My nice. goodness! <laughs> yeah, nice block there from Devil himself on that cross up, but it doesn't matter. Shin Palo still takes the round. The EX pop off, as I call it right there, doesn't have to spend you, any you know meter. It. Hey man, it's it's a tone. It's a tone. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Here we go. There's a lot of buttons being pressed. Nice punish. Yeah, I feel like if I was Devil himself right now, I'd be like, I do not want to guess against akuma right now at all he has one bar meter so i'm just gonna go ham which is exactly what he's doing Ooh. nice whip punish no combo and Ooh, then... the sure you can in the back yeah something tekken players are still you know learning to deal with to this day are a couple of things like you know the dp Ooh, challenge cross up. what's going on oh my god what a turnaround <laughs> here from shin palo i oh, can't even <laughs> i can't the... what is going on <laughs> And we got the stars and stripes up on both players, so you know where they're from this time around. Yeah. <laughs> they, oh, wow, we fixed it. Nice. <laughs> All right. All right. Nice wall standing two here from Shinpalo. If he plays it right, he might be able to get the wall. Maybe a little short. No, he did get Ooh, it. Oh, yeah. Just a bit shallow. Nice low parry from Devil himself. Seen too many down threes. Yeah, I feel like if you're an Akuma player, you kind of have to make your peace with, like, getting low parry for down. Yeah, 100%. Or going to be looking out for that low a lot. Whoa, but now, that was a lot of jump fours. Jump around. Jump. Jump. <laughs> and then fireball to deal with Cali Roll. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I feel like I can speak for half the chat now. I expected that Cali Roll to go under the fireball. I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm just kind of used to seeing some real skullduggery. Is that a, yeah. that a European term? Still degree. That's might, new to might me. Also, <laughs> might also be a bebop term. I'm not even sure myself. I just kind of come up with it and let it go, and I hope people don't call me out on it. So well done, well done. Yeah, but like you're saying, that California roll. You know, I even though it didn't happen there, I don't want to rule out that it's a possibility that it, it yeah. might be able to go under fireball. Uh, I know Lucky Chloe's does. So. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean. <laughs> Mate, it, it goes under the lowest profile of mid, so I would 100% expect that to go under Fireball. Um, but unfortunately for Devil himself, it did not go under right there. And mm. we'll see if uh, he can make any adjustments here 
with Link's strategy. We see Yoshimitsu as his character profile picture, actually. He played a lot of Yoshimitsu as well in Tag 2. Mm. So I wouldn't be too surprised if yeah. we see that character as well. I mean, it would be nice. Obviously, Yoshi had a bit of love in the latest patch, too. Um, obviously, you know, a bit more options out of Kin Stance now. Hey, you got a low. A sword low at that, so you can't yeah. low parry it. Unparryable. I, I got a feeling we're going to stick with the Ling. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, in this format, character switching is a little scary because you lose mm -hmm. one and then you only You're have on one life left. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely a double edged sword. Obviously, you're forcing your opponent to readjust, but then again, the same goes for you because you're playing you're playing a different character. Right. And Devil himself switching the outfit, going for the metallic outfit. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a fan. <laughs> no, I I you know I think there's a theme because I feel like every time they've opted for the default, they've done better. But you know, obviously, I guess they're just switching it up. Damn, these fireballs are adding up though. I mean, that's the name of the game when it comes to 2D characters, right? I feel like a lot of, uh, and I've talked uh, about this extensively with a lot of America's top players, where so many people have such a huge problem with 2D characters in Tekken 7, because as Tekken players, we are not used to controlling uh, the opponent's resources. And by resources, I mean that meter management. Of course. Yeah. Ooh, the cross under sidewall one pixel left and you oh exdp <laughs> mary dp Ooh. Fight. right into it what a comeback there from shin palo and that's what i was and that's another thing too that you know another aspect of playing against 2d characters is that dragon uppercut the invincible exdp that you always have to be on the lookout for obviously uh Devil himself, obviously, it happened a bit earlier at the wall, but a missed punish on the sweep. You really can't be letting Akuma get away with those, especially at this level. Yeah, it, the, the more tools you can take away from Akuma, <laughs> the better, obviously, Ooh, right? Oh, that said, dealt with jump twice. Oh, and the... Ooh, no! Red fireball doesn't oh. matter. <laughs> she got punched twice in the butt. <laughs> it happens, man. It, it... Right, oh, fa family street, family street. Right, no one's going to prison today. No one's getting cancelled. Alright, here we go. Shin Palo walk around the way. Has one bar meter on deck. So he's looking yeah. pretty comfortable. Oh my Very god. Very comfortable. You gotta stop showing your rear. No. Akuma is a classy man. Go back to school, young girl. And into the wall, low into Tatsu, into Resplat, into <laughs> combo. My. That is an Akuma main if we've ever seen one. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. There was a moment where I thought, I've seen good Akuma players drop this before, but not and Shin Paolo. Bar meter on deck. Yeah. Definitely uh, execution is a factor when you're playing Akuma and. Shin Palo is seasoned enough, definitely has it, even when it comes to tournaments. You know, that's normally where you see people drop combos, right? Shout out to Bronson Tran. And so, <laughs> Damn, putting him on blast. He knows it, I know it all. America knows it. And uh, yeah. But yeah. Shin Palo closing it out right there with the clutch combo right there to finish it off. Nothing new. I'm sure you've seen it plenty of times, with yeah. especially having Super over there. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, Akuma's just one of those characters, like, you know, I I feel like, you know, I don't want to take it away from the players, but, like, you know, regardless of who plays him, I think a lot of the people see Akuma on the screen and kind of expect to see how the match goes, or at the very least, they'd like to see how the momentum goes. Uh, but, no, I mean, you said it yourself, like, you know, if we ever saw an Akuma main, it was then, just now. I mean, Shinpao very, really put a foot wrong. Um, great use of um, the three option to check the mid space. Obviously, looking for the running three AOP options, getting the uh, getting the conversion floats as well. So, I mean, didn't just play to their character strengths, but also great uh, player and uh, character knowledge. Can't really fault them. Let's get so a quick fellas, update here on the bracket from Spooky. Oh, there you go. You guys, you guys can take a peek and see what it looks like. Uh, Shin Polo is four zero. Do I have that right? Wow, he's looking great right now. Damn, looking very yeah. strong. He's looking 
about the same as he did in the last time he was in lockdown. <laughs> That's true. We're looking very comfortable. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like, unfortunately, I Vesper X was unable to show today. You know, like I said, many factors. This is an online tournament. Uh, maybe something went wrong with the internet. It's, weather's a huge factor right now over here on the East Coast. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. It, it is a shame, unfortunately, but. You know that that's the way it goes i mean even offline like you know you get you get these dqs you know they they happen life gets in the way you know it, it is unfortunate but yeah, man shin palo run away with it and um i think we need to bring up as well i do believe it is going to be um four players make it out of pools um so it's going to be four of the of our players will actually get the chance to make it out not two all right it looks that's like going to be interesting on uh, deck, that, 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 that sounds correct. They do have, I think they have a, a stretch goal that involves getting all the top 16 in there. Uh, but if you guys give the big support you gave the last time, I believe that it's almost going to be a certain thing that is yeah, going to go it's, down. It's a done deal. You describe it. Pretty much, I think that's going to happen, guys. Once again, uh, my name is Spooky, guys. I'm just jumping in to say hello for a second. Uh, thank you for your big support. You can support via Matcharino as well, guys. Thank you for the $72 and change that you've already contributed to, for week number one. It's going over for five weeks in total. So stick around and catch all the weeks, fellas, every Sunday here on Twitch.tv. Spooky. A big thank you to Red Bull Gaming for helping us out and supporting. Thank you, East London Fighters. And, of course, thank you, NYC Tekken and the whole crew. Enjoy the rest, fellas. All right. Yeah. That's all those guys. That... And right now Dang. we're having Dante and Incognito. These two players, very familiar with, with each other. They helped each other grow during the early stages well, the late stages of Tag 2 and early stages of Tekken 7, I want to mm. say. Training parts? Mm, one could say. I don't know if I would use the term training partners, but definitely in the same circle of players. In, in Influential to each other's growth, yeah, I believe sure. the PC term is. Yeah. Yeah, um, cool. I'll be honest, I'm really excited about this matchup because these are two players I'm very excited to see. Um, so I think this will be a very key matchup for the, for the round robin. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, you know, I love seeing matchups like this when two players are so familiar with each other because there's a huge meta game here now, right? So you're not going to see them play the same way they would as if they were playing someone fresh and new, right? They're going to be like, oh, I know this guy is going to do this because I know his habits. But then they do the opposite 100%. thing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the, the classic. Yeah, exactly. Tom Foolery, as it were. Uh, Golduggery? Skullduggery, but yeah, I, I'll be honest, I have no idea if it's even a thing. <laughs> so use it at your own risk. So here right. we go. Ooh. Right, here we go. Obviously, getting a buff with 444 on block now is safe. Yeah, I don't know why, but okay. Why? I know, like, because one, uh, one of my training partners is a Brian main, and I hate that change so much. Oh, I mean, especially you being a lay player, you know, you used to get while standing oh, three. Oh, it's rough. It's uh, <laughs> yeah. And meanwhile, I'm just like, you know, a regular law player for the most part. Yeah. And I, but I do love punishing moves with crouch jab, and mock kick used to be one of those moves you can punish with yeah. crouch jab. No longer, sir. Damn, time becoming a factor. Low oh, parry. Time. There was time now. Two seconds left on the clock. Damn. Doesn't matter. No, oh, even it was the right call to make, but still not even enough time for the rage on the play out. We're on a clock. Nice block on the side. Oh, no conversion. Bad Brian punch, yeah. having two very good options. Yeah, I've definitely heard before that uh, Brian players consider this matchup to be in Law's favor a little bit. I mean, Law's a really quick, mashy character, right? And Brian's kind of mm. a slow tank. But. If you can make it work, Brian will look super good in this matchup. Incognito has a very nice, comfortable life lead right here, trying not to run into any launchers. Doesn't want to Ooh, run into any commentators. Like <laughs> oh, here we go. And like that. Oh my. Is that the round? That Ooh. is the round. You know, even with the wall combo nerf and the wall scaling nerf in general, still able to take. That round right there with that nice little wall combo. My goodness. I mean, I feel like we've seen this before. Dante being at such a huge life deficit. And before you know it, his opponent's health is just gone. Yeah, he does have a reputation. I've heard so many of his training partners say, man, I can't kill him. <laughs> like, <laughs> he just won't die. Yeah. Ooh, big count hit. 
all the taunt back four into a counter hit hatchet? Interesting stuff Ooh, flailing yeah. around. So there, there's, there's definitely some interpretive dance going on here. Right, okay, there we go. There we go. A perfect response to the double flip. It's an options like punish, just throwing out that quick down forward two. Ooh, starting things off with mid sock. Nice punish on Northern Cross. Oh, could have punished with a jet upper right there. Wasn't ready for it for some reason. Right, Ooh, magic uh, fall. Great option from Dante. Takes it to the wall. Yeah, misses the wall a little bit there, but here comes the martial law law prep. <laughs> law wall pressure. Low parry <laughs> takes away the wall threat. Run up Okazemi. 50-50s. Oh, <laughs> back back forward into spring kick. You know, you said it yourself, man. We were gonna see some crazy shenanigans, and I think we had it in spades. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Incognito is one of those players, right? Where I always like to think of these players where if you didn't know who was playing, but you watched what they did, you're like, oh, that's Incog. Incognito <laughs> right there. A trademark. Oh my goodness. Down for 2 3, getting the knockdown. Break on chains. Very nice. Right, but is he going to be able to kill Dante? Here's the legend kick. Plus frames everywhere. Ooh, Block the... on the rising two. Nice punish. Keeps it safe. Very nicely done from Incog. I'm not going to lie, man. For a split second, I was worried for Incog. I thought, we're back into neutral now. Dante's got resource. You know, he's in, he's in the clutch where he seems to thrive. I was a bit worried. <laughs> Even though Incog had like full health working on the perfect yeah all he had to do was make if inca incog had eight you know just one of those double flips or down two three or something like that then you know he would have been in big trouble but like i said earlier these two players are very familiar with each other so you know he was definitely looking out for those uh big gambles there at the end of the round yeah 100 percent, man Ooh, heading back in. Now, do you think we're gonna... So, obviously, this is more of a hypothetical situation. Um, obviously, because obviously you say in these uh, guys, they know each other, very familiar with each other. I think we can vouch that, seeing how that game went as well. Um, say Incog ends up a game in the hole. Do you think he'll bring out Bob, or do you think he'll stay with Brian? I think he'll stay with Brian because... Uh... As I know these two have a pretty stable connection with each other. That's why they're able to play each other all the time. And that's important <laughs> to him as a Brian player. You know, Brian pretty execution heavy. Uh, and he really just loves playing Brian in general. So, especially since, you know, he's been less active in the competitive scene than he used to be. Ooh, big whiff punish from Dante, but doesn't quite get the conversion. Confirm on Machine Gun, very nice. Right. No little confirm there on that sway smash. Oh Ooh, no! And mass confirm. Oh no! Oh, Dante drops the Ooh, combo. Oh, drops though. the DSS. Ooh. But that was a what ugly whiff to drive right there. My goodness. Here we go. Legend kick straight out the gates. Dante choosing to slow down a little bit here. Does have oh. infinite. Nice little conversion on the trade there. Right into the junkyard combo. Slidey. Oh, using out. full crouch for slide, you sly dog. There we go. Cutting machine gun punch uh, short. Obviously off axis. Can whiff. Very nice awareness. All right. Nice punish on Northern Cross right here. And the plus raise. Oh, 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 off axis. Oh, 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 going on? Oh my, oh my goodness! No, 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 not like this! Not like this! That was definitely a dropped uh, quarter second for three knee, but <laughs> it worked out! We take those! We take those! <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, Sorry, nice Dante. Down, see, see you on Twitter, man. That's all I gotta say. But here we go, damn, answering back a very strong round here for Dante, keeping his turn with these very precise pokes, keeping it safe, machine gun. Ooh, little Ooh. Bit, oh. He's Ooh. batting a thousand on the top kicks. Can he finish the combo this time? Yes, legend. There we go. 
Damn, right, a great answer back. Good character here from Dante. Very nicely done. Yeah, Dante looking to clean up this round right here. Ooh, no whiff punish on the Northern Cross right there. Yeah, definitely got away with murder. All right, and Cog trying to keep it at a favorable pace right here. Ooh, getting clipped, losing his turn. Damn. We're starting to see strings and a lot of ankle crushes going on here. A majority of all this damage that Incog is taking this round has all just been quick pokes just like that. Just like that down 4-3 right there. You know, block the running 3, you eat the 50-50. Yeah. And Dante not scared to go for these lows against Incognito. Yeah. You know you know what I think Incognito should have done to take that round back? I think we should have seen another Snake Edge. Test the man's <laughs> reactions, you know? You never know. Maybe, maybe you know. Was he lucky? Never know. I don't know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, something tells me it wouldn't have panned out. But hey, man, I've seen I've seen Stranger Things. Like you know, we you know, I mean, we just saw back back four and a hop kick earlier. So you know, yeah, um, really key hop kicks too from Dante, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, there was a lot of hop kicks. Um, obviously, so you would see um. Dante opting for like, you know, 3-4, uh, uh, looking to get, obviously, utilizing the low high strings, trying to get a bit of a ducking game going on Incogs, uh, uh, going on in his head. And then you would notice it would just, he would delay just a beat, and then he would go for the hop kick just to try and throw off his timing. I mean, that's something you would only really see in a player versus player matchup. So, yeah, again, it's coming back to these guys just know each other. Yeah, I mean, Law is one of those characters that can... He's so versatile where you can play so many ways. You can, like, just, like, nay nay them with safety and just be, you know, just quick pokes, magic fours, down back threes. Or you can go, you know, balls to the wall and throw out hop kicks, flip kicks, slides, dragon tails. Well, maybe not dragon tails. Well, you can do that too. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. <laughs> well, I mean, that said, I mean, don't be so 100%. Here we go. Even on the life lead. Ooh, ducking on the down for two. Can't launch crouches. Oh, oh nice. great northern cross. Well placed. This should be the wall. No problem. Gets the clean splat, and that's the kill. ZP's in there. Nice round there for McCog. Second. Tate's been doing a lot of junkyard convergence off of combos for some reason. I'm really curious as to why. And there's another one just running Damn. into it. And the stomp! We are 100% on stomp, too. My goodness. Enter the dragon right there. Ohara! <laughs> Man, shout out. What a movie. Ooh, right, okay. Good patience there from Incog. It's really funny to say, right? But it's. Well, I mean it when I say it. Like, good job not running into down yeah, 2. No, well done not getting launched. I know, right? Here we go, legend kick for the ender. Banana peel, whilst anyone, no con confirmation. Yeah. Oh, oh raw split. That was an interesting combo, I thought. I'm not sure what he had planned there. And down 3 4 to seal the deal. Yeah, easy peasy finish there. Dante one round away from closing this out. DSS 4. Ooh, opting for fisherman. I wonder why Bar Ryan players don't do that oh, more often, right? No. Oh, yeah, Jet uppercut. Not having enough range to look at Oh, that. no. Ah, you can't string those, homie. Not here, you can't. Slidey. Slide. Damn, this is a very bad place to be. And Damn. again. Damn. Cleaning house with down three throws. Uh, these down four threes. I mean, my goodness. Like. I know you said it in the first game. Doc is not afraid to check your f shoes, man. Like, he wants to see those Tims, and he will <laughs> see them. Like, 100%. Uh, damn, what? I mean, I think we couldn't have got any better than that. What a set. What yes. a set, indeed. All a set, for sure. Like I mentioned earlier, these two are, I guess we could just, for lack of a better term, just call them training partners. So, mm. that really could have gone either way. Uh, it was one to one still, and. Good match overall, I think. Yeah, no, 100%. Like you said, obviously, 
both got uh, both got a game in. It stayed competitive throughout. Um, you know, we got to see some uh, uh, some interesting interactions. Uh, drop combo into Snake Edge, but uh, you know, it's you know, jokes aside. I mean, that was just a solid turnout for both. Like, you know, there was adaption, there was character knowledge, there was player knowledge. I mean, just fundamentals of what it means to be a competitive player. So you can't really go wrong. And then, but we also have to remember this is a round robin format, so neither of these players are done quite just yet. So we're no. gonna see. Um, no, and Kyle has plenty of life left to live. Definitely, but, this this still this still gas in the tank, hundred percent. I don't know, and Kyle's getting up there in years. <laughs> Damn, call him out, old man. Reactions? Oh, <laughs> I mean, but I do, I do think Tekken is one of those games, man. Uh your dad powers come into effect, you can still play yeah. this game. I can see I mean, scale is so important. Yeah, I know what you mean, because I feel like th there's like a lot of players I look up to, and I feel like that a lot of them are like in, you know, in like dad territory, like, you know, and I don't mean just by their dress sense, you know, like, I mean, they, they, they're in age, they, like, it's, it's almost as if like your maturity comes into the game almost. You know, and like, you know, with the legacy, I feel like you just hone your powers a bit, like you said. So maybe, maybe there's a chance for me. Give me 15 more years and I will be taking names of the best of them. Right, speaking of powers, guys, don't forget to use your powers to support this match, Reno. Uh The Moobot will be hooking you up with the code. Doesn't cost you anything to contribute. Just put in the code and it's a free 50 cent donation to all these players that you're watching right now. Yeah. No, couldn't have said it about myself. So thank you guys to those who have supported. I believe the match arena is up to 7561. Oh, That's and right. also guys, don't forget, there is a giveaway. I believe it is up on the stream now. Uh, if you donate to match arena with $5, you will be put in for a chance to win yourself an ELF and New York City coin. Uh, so obviously, I mean, it's there right now. I mean, look at it, it's so shiny. Why wouldn't you do that? Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's hella good. So obviously, if you like your merch, guys, and you th and you want to support, you just want to have a bit of fun, uh, go do it. And I think also on the screen, there was also some uh, spooky merch up for grabs as well. So also be sure to check that out if you want to su help support uh, the tournament even further. And all the proceeds go to the Macharino. Uh, you know, we don't see a cent of it. Uh, so obviously, if you just do it for the support, it will go its way. So thank you very much if you have already. But enough talk, enough community uh, back padding. So we're going to go into a game. Um, is this a game you're excited to see? Because I feel like you've been itching to see this one as well. I do want to see it. I don't know how much Akuma matchup B Rich has. I don't think I've ever won. I've, I don't know, rather, I don't think I've ever seen him play against an Akuma player, but he is a Tekken 7 player, so he should, you know, he shouldn't know what to do. He should know it. Yeah, he should know the matchup. But, you know, right. knowing is only half the battle. Of course, 100%. <laughs> I mean, you're talking about old age, man. You bring up that old line. Come on, bro. <laughs> right, Here we nice. go. Just a lot poking from both at the moment. Very Ooh. nice. Nice Hadouken punish. Damn. And then Pao also loves that power crush right there. I believe it's minus 14, so Feng can't get a launcher. But no. Does get shoulder. Shoulder if he's on point. Nice while standing two here. And that's one of the most annoying things to me when I'm playing against Akuma. It's just, just jumping while standing two and then he jumps around. Yeah, I know. It's like time to guess, bro. It's like you blocked it, time to guess again. It's like, well, okay then. Oh, there we go. Confirming the jump, gets the float. Oh, spring kick to deal with back ten. And again, seen this one before, jabbing out of the air, getting conversion. I like how we're seeing uh, multiple options from the conversion. He's like, I want to do this different combo now because I jabbed him out the air. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. A lot of respect in neutral right now. That said, oh, drops the EX cancel, but it's okay. Down three into Tatsu takes it. Fight. The classic. When in doubt, down three out. <laughs> Alright, two rounds straight for Shinpala, but he has used up all his meter already. So he has to play Akuma in a very simple way. Just the 50 50s with down three like that. Doesn't get a Ooh, full combo. Again, still no meter to work with. One more time. Be rich. Not quite done yet. Never oh. mind. <laughs> 
My goodness. Turned around so fast. It's... <laughs> You you can't help but feel bad for Beerus because the moment he started getting foot on the gas, started getting somewhere, bam, back in the classroom, taking a back seat, and in the end, you know, the meter game was enough for Shinpao to take the game. So it was very unfortunate. But that said, even even if hypothetically Beerus did make a comeback, he would have been going into the next round, and Shinpao would have had meter. So it's it's kind of you know you you screwed if you do, you screwed if you don't. Like you know you're on the back foot no matter how you really slice it. Definitely a huge factor in playing against Akuma is trying to keep track of his meter, and you kind of you just want to kill him before he can use it, right? But yeah, easier said than done. Oh, hundred percent. Especially when you're dealing with like you know a real character expert like you know in Shimpala, you know, because we've seen a lot of stuff here on the stream today that goes to show he might be a little good. You know, he he might he might actually know might what he's know. doing. <laughs> yeah, you know, he might he might. I got a feeling. But yeah, obviously it's gonna be interesting to see what the answer back from B Rich is going to be. And we got the character stage. Ooh, we're gonna go see Pac-Man back in the 80s. Alright, alright. Surprising uh song hit, I feel like. People I think a lot of Tekken players really enjoyed this song, which I found out not too long ago. It's actually just from like a recent uh Pac-Man game that released. Oh, is it the uh is it the table one? I have no idea. <laughs> I, 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 hey man, I haven't played Pac-Man since I was in a dive bar like four years ago, so... You know, the same, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah, nice block on Tatsu, classic launch punish, drops the combo! No! Nice duck on Power Crush, no conversion! Alright, nice wall pressure here, though. Teleports his way out, nice patience there Ooh. from... Dang, bro. That's twice now we've seen Demon teleport defensive options. That time paying off. Alright, no whiff punish on the shoulder there. Trying to keep his pacing, but Akuma's looking pretty good. One round lead, and he has meter. No punish on the Hadouken. I don't know, actually, if Feng gets a shoulder there at that specific. Yeah, the uh, range speed. seemed a bit questionable. Yeah. It's pretty risky, I think. Oh mm -hmm. my god. EXP counter hit. Right, but at the Demon same flip, time. Bro. Oh my god, kill him! <laughs> Wait, is that a weird back to it? Right, yeah, okay, that's okay. it. Yeah. That was... So I think what happened there is I guess maybe he tried to shoulder and he got up back, what plus two said? Nah, Nothing like that. If, if that's the case, I would be a little steamed right now if I was um, rich. Not gonna lie, I really wanted some Tekken 7 craziness to happen right there and maybe that. Unblockable. It's, it's just from behind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, two Ooh, rounds. Here, burns the meter, drops the combo though. Nice side move from B Rich. Definitely looking comfy. Oh, no, lets it rip. Hmm. No. See, Akuma has a way easier punish for that. He can just down for two one it. But uh, I feel like Akuma players aren't actually used to using that to punish. They just instinctively go for the back one cancel. Oh, that's dead. Nice low. Oh, God. Too soon. Oh my <gasps> God. Drop the Drops the dash in. No, not like this. Oh, but you never, but easy down forward one, one ender. Three rounds straight for Shinpalo, but I'm not going to lie. It got a little bit ugly right there. <laughs> no, it, it definitely did. We definitely saw some interpretive dance there in, in the uh, in the second round with the with the unblockable. We'll call it a setup. We'll call it a set. Nah, but I think I think that was a missed input. Very unfortunate, but um, but you know, like we were we were joking about you know, would you get like you know a sort of weird exchange with the unblockable hit and even back turn? I'm just saying, Shimpalo was hesitant to press until it whiffed. Yeah. I will say that. So I think he was expecting it too. Like maybe um, let's just. Play We'll just wait it out uh, just a little bit. <laughs> just a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I'm, gonna have, I'm gonna get my chance eventually. Of course. I mean, you know, just smart play. But I think everyone was in the same mind. Like, if that hit, I don't think anyone would have been surprised. <laughs> oh, hey, my goodness. So real quick, just to jump in, uh, we've gotten through uh, close to the first half of tonight's league so far. Thanks for all of your support, everybody at home. Uh, we do have a special video that the Elf team has put together. Uh, that I hope you guys will enjoy. It's actually a pretty long video, so if you guys want to take a break, be Bob and Reno for a few minutes. The video is about seven minutes long, so that gives you plenty of time to use the restroom, grab a drink, whatever you need to do, me. get a good stretch. 
So that's perfect, guys. Anyway, uh, stick around if you guys want to see it. Once again, guys, before we start with this and we start with the cool video, don't forget to follow the homies Baybop. Check them out, Bebop, on Twitter. And check out the homie Reno as well, Reno Face, also on Twitter. Give them a follow, fellas. Anyway, fellas, you guys, if you want to take a break for a second, go for it. I'm going to actually load the video up right now. I hope that you guys will enjoy it. You guys can also stick around if you want to see it, but I can't give you the audio easily via Discord. So if you want to listen in, you'll probably have to use the Twitch stream directly to listen to it. That's it. Enjoy, guys. Problem. Yeah, have a good one, guys. See you in a bit. All right. So here we go. I'm going to try to play it right now, fellas. Let's see if it plays on the first try. If it doesn't, forgive me, and I'll give it another shot. Uh, hold on, I think that it's playing, but I need to get the audio in there for you. So give me a second, fellas, and once we got that, we should be good. Oh, pause, please. There you go. Hold on. Okay, let's try that one more time, and with any luck. There we go. Hey, we did it. All right. Let's take a peek, fellas, at what this is about. Um, my name is Shin Paulo. You guys know me from last last lockdown. Um, <clears throat> I'm back, and I'm better than ever. Let's just say that for the least. <clears throat> so I did have to drop out last minute because of uh, university and um, personal things that were going on at that moment, the time and moment. Um, it gave me a lot more motivation, honestly. You know, just getting this. Uh, buy back from the gulag it gave me the second chance to uh you know this second chance means a lot i'm thankful for task force one for one to call give me the give me the ring and actually let me be a participant this time uh i'm definitely both nervous and excited uh, nervous because it's an event of exclusively uh, top players, um, but excited to get the opportunity to gauge where I'm at uh, skill level wise. Uh, this is my first ever Tekken game, and I've been playing since day one on the Xbox release. Uh, since then, I've transitioned to PS4 and PC. Uh, I've played against top level players uh, before in both offline events and uh, finding them on ranked. And I definitely think I hold my own. Um, so my expectation for this event is to prove to myself that I have uh, what it takes to get to the, the next level and to not get absolutely blown out. <laughs> Well, being the last minute slot in feels really nice, actually. I'm glad I was considered to be a part of this in the first place, no doubt due to in part my pal Bowstar. Um, I feel a little bit nervous and a bit unprepared for such a stacked tourney on short notice, but also excited to see what I can do. I'd have to say, um, I've only done like a couple of run rounds and tournaments and, um, you know, it just really comes to player matchup and understanding who you're fighting against. And after being in competing for years now, like over 10 years, I would say, um, I'm pretty comfortable with that, with that, um, you know, with the round robin, I think season four does make it a difference because there are a lot of new moves, changes. And they gave a lot of buffs to a lot of different characters, and including mine. So, in a way, I would say it doesn't matter, but Season 4 does give a lot of advantages to characters. So, it's going to be an interesting challenge just to see how we adapt in these different scenarios, getting these new moves on us. And obviously, lab time makes that really uh, apparent. So, I'm excited. If I won the lion's share of the tourney, I would probably spend it on some backup Hori fighting commanders because I'd destroy those pads like there's no tomorrow. Um, and then a new graphics card when they become available. <laughs> um, if I made even a small dent in getting that prize pool, 
I would donate, honestly, donate some of it to Wounded Warrior Foundation. Um, help those military people in need. And then probably go buy something nice for this lady I like. Um. <laughs> well, I'm definitely get a new pad and a new controller. I'm in need for that. And um, maybe a PS5 too while I'm at it because it's definitely within the uh, uh, range of that. Um, maybe how to give back to some of the community in terms of, you know, for when we do have another tournament, maybe a little bit of that goes to that, some of them to my car. Um, overall, just get ready for, um, maybe use it some of it for the tournaments to come, because, you know, we're just starting in 2021, so I hope after COVID is over, there will be tournaments popping up left and right, so that can come in handy. Incognito, I played not too long ago on Ranked. We played for like an hour. Uh, I've never been taunted upward so many times in a single session, but getting to play against uh, a high-level Brian like his definitely taught me a lot about the matchup, and I definitely want to get a chance to run it back with him. The two players that I definitely want to avoid is Dante, who I believe is a law, or an Elisa main, or both. Two matchups that are that I'm very unfamiliar with, as Long Island doesn't have top level laws or releases. And Vesper, who is a Horang main, which might sound surprising because I'm an original Horang main uh, when I first started playing this game, but Horang being the mix of master that he is, um, if you get put in the blender, it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter how well you know that matchup. So uh, I want to avoid him and Dante. Three is a good question. You know, what players am I? Uh, well, I like my pool to answer the first part. I think it's very balanced. I like the fact that I'm not fighting anyone from New York uh, right away. Um, incog, me and him, good friends. So it's good to play against your your friends and in, in, in battle. And, you know, it shows that, you know, as we are practicing, get better. We're getting better as a group. And, um, you know, playing incog since the... Tekken Dark Resurrection days is definitely something that, you know, I enjoy and I hope to um, really show him just how far I've come a long way as, as well as he has considering, you know, both players have um, done well with their characters. My pool, like most in the league, feels hella stacked. B Rich is a fellow Binghamton University student, so I'm excited to play him in this. And I'm really looking forward to playing the veteran Tekken players in this event um, because they know the Bob matchup really well, and that'll be a great learning experience for me going forward. I'm excited for my pool, honestly. I'm really, really excited because <clears throat> new blood, you know, new, new uh, entrees and desserts that we're going to have. So I'm excited. Um, I hope to get to see you guys tomorrow. See you guys. Good to see you there. All right. One last thing. One last thing. Right, right. One last thing. Be sure to use that uh, Call of Duty support creator code. Uh, NYC Tech and East London Fighters, Team Spooky, and Red Bull do not support this message. See you guys later. All right. <laughs> that was good. The finish was dope there. All right, guys, my name is Spooky. Thank you, as always, for watching T Spooky. I appreciate the support. Uh, tonight, you guys are watching Lockdown League 2, brought to you by a nice combination of NYC Tech and East London Fighters. I hope that you guys are enjoying it. Uh, once again, I want to remind you that if you're enjoying the tournament tonight, so please check out the match from your crowdfund. Uh, you guys have been amazing with your support so far. Thanks to all of you. We're now at over $81 and change for week number one. Uh, don't forget that we also have many special stretch goals. I think that you guys will reach these pretty easily because you guys are great with supporting these events. Check them out. All top 16 matches on stream. That will be for the last event, week number five. At $750, it will be a first of three top eight. And at $1,000, there will be a special Tekken Tag 1 net play event. That should be lots of fun. Uh, they also have their special NYC Tekken X Elf coin giveaway. Check them out. They're really dope. You can support in lots of different ways. And a big thank you to the top donators tonight, including Lord Loken and Cracked LCD. Antenna Club's also up in there. Thanks for donating from your wallets, guys. We appreciate your direct support. I guess that's pretty much it. So we're going to start jumping back into it shortly. How you doing, fellas? You guys almost back in business? Oh, there's Bebop. Where's the homie Reno at? Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's just being fashionably late as always. Okay. Oh, oh uh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs>
So we're going to start setting up for the next match. I'm sure the homie Reno will return to be with us shortly, everybody. The next match that we yeah. have lined up is uh, B Rich versus Incog. So I'm going to invite them to the lobby right now. And we're going to get it all started in just a minute. Stick around if you guys oh, want to see there it. There we go. Per we go. Perfectly perfect timed. Timing. See? That's perfect. That's Was, exactly what I wasn't worried. About. Wasn't That's, worried, even uh, when I was. I'd never worry. Are you kidding me? Never worry. That's the homie right there. All <laughs> we're right, professionals guys. here. We're professionals. That's right. So we're going to invite the homies to the lobby right now, guys. So we're going to get started with the next one. Again, the next match. Let's see if I have it right here. It's B Rich versus Incognito. This should be great. Enjoy it, fellas at home. And let's get into it. Nice. This one should be a good one. Um, I think they're a little familiar with each other. Uh, for those Tekken fans in the chat. Uh, Incognito does stream quite often in the show that we like to call the Danger Room. And I think B Rich has been involved in that a few times, so there's definitely some information there. I don't think too much. Both a true Tekken God, though. Damn, the, the, uh, the rank does not play a part. Very evenly balanced. Um, also, I like the wording on Danger Room as well. Very classic. I mean, the best place to hone your skills in the deadliest area known to man. Uh, I don't know how much Brian experience B Rich has. I think he talked about it maybe a little bit there in his uh, interview. I might have missed it a little bit. Um, however, Incognito definitely has the Fang matchup experience. Uh, fellow New yeah. Jersey and Nashi, also a 100%. member of the Lockdown League. Yeah, obviously Nashi, very strong Fang. So obviously going to be very accustomed to the matchup here. Uh, obviously shouldn't be getting surprised in any way, but... You never know, but for that ball, that's definitely much in B Rich's court. So, is this going to be player influenced, or is it going to be a case of you know Incog just playing very dominant? You know, I heard someone mention it earlier in their interview, and I don't think we've seen the taunt jet upper from Incognito yet. I know he's more than capable no. of pulling it off in a match. I've been hit enough by them, but oh my no. god! Oh, right, okay. When you whiff punish with shoulder right off the bat, that's always a good sign. Yeah, and nice use of the back tempo step there from B Rich. Gonna be getting the wall. Nice little quick wall combo. The down four one plus two. And now B Rich with a like very comfortable right there. Yeah, uphill struggle here from Incognito. Burning rage really early on. Wedge driver. Damn, checking the shins. Not enough. Right. Ooh. I'm surprised Damn. that up four two beat out the uh, the double hatchet kick right there. Nice. Yeah. Classic, just what you want to see from a Brian specialist. Here's a taunt. I'm talking about taunt. There it is. It's not a taunt jet uppercut, but I'll no take it. No way, man. Taunt back four is still pretty sick. <laughs> it's still sick. Four, four, two, one, four, punch, punch, kick. Fight. All right. There you go, man. Yeah. Great rounds, both there. One apiece. There you go. Rising four count hit. Nice Wait, step and punish. Damn, yeah. clean. And that moves not that fast. Uh, the uh, Boa Crusher forward four one. So that was a very clean side step, like you said. But Ooh, very clean splash. Punish. Damn, great awareness from B Rich. No need to step to realign either. Ooh, big yeah, mock kick there. <laughs> yeah, Incognito definitely loves that move. All right, B Rich working on a perfect right now. Trying to slow Ooh. it up a bit, but... Big. <laughs> Back one counter hit all the way to the wall. Opting for Oki here. Chooses not to get up smart. Now has to respect the taunt game. Ooh, and the counter hit down dang. three, two? Incognito, when... I've known Incog as a player for a long time, and once he starts throwing out strings like that, like the down three, two, which, you know, obviously not a natural combo. You can stuff duck the second hit and yeah. walk for it. So that's just a sign of his confidence right there. 100%, man. I mean, it's funny because like I've spoken to a few Brian players and a lot of them say that down 3-2, it just, it's one of those strings. If someone thinks it's natural, you can kind of forgive them for, for thinking that way. It does seem to get a lot of traction, but yeah, I know 100%, I totally agree. I mean, especially at this level when you expect the duck rate on that move to be very high. Um, no, definitely looking very comfortable, uh, very confident to use that at the end. Yeah, it's a clear sign of just how comfortable he got towards that final round right there, where he's just like, you know what, you're on the floor, I'm just going to do it. Uh, I think you're worried about too many other things, so I'm not even scared if you dug it. Incognito is one of those players, man, when he's, when he's hot, he's on fire. Yeah. 
definitely 100%. Alright, going to the infinite Azure 2 pick from Be Rich. Wants to avoid those walls, wants to avoid the taunt situation. And, um, you know, yeah. Yankai just showed that, you know, he, he's got those. Yeah, definitely. I mean, a smart pick, honestly. Like like you said, obviously, taking the wall away, obviously. But, you know, cuts both ways. Obviously, Be Rich working up the wall here. And, obviously, that's something that Fang is pretty good at himself. Yeah, without walls, Fang's combo damage is very mediocre. So, that I think that'll play a factor as well. Ooh, here we go. Oh. Ooh, roll a chat up. A... I was about to call Incognito some dirty names. <laughs> Feeling himself just a little too much. Right, okay, we got the launch here. Nice conversion from B Rich. Opti for shoulder ender. Yeah, nice little buff there from uh, for Season 4 Fang as well, that while standing 2 combo. But doesn't matter right here. Incognito still takes that first round. Nice side step 3 plus 4. Went for the taunt jet uppercut and missed it by just a hair. I think he's gonna go for it again. He's looking yeah, so Yeah, I, I think so too. Depending how this round goes, definitely. Nice block. Ooh, doesn't get the punish. Uh, uh, while setting two, Fisherman Slam, definitely too slow to punish that down back three. All right, going for the counter hit four strings. Brian mm. Schell, kicks. Northern Cross, punished, very nice. Yeah, going for the frame trap there. That's something that's been pretty common now that you see from Bayern players. Just a quick hatchet kick right into Jet Uppercut. It's a frame tight air uh, trap, even though Jet Uppercut is a high. All right, 10 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, and time's definitely out. factor here. Ooh, no, misses the punish. Three seconds left, it's done. Just back Damn. up all the way. Yeah. Oh, Just... Off breaker. <laughs> Hey, one of them uh, was bound to hit, man. Come on, give him some slack. Yeah, I can tell Incog's having a bit of fun with this right now, which is, you know, even though this is a serious match, I still love to see it, man. It's still a game. It's still a video game. <laughs> I like yeah. to see players having a good time. Definitely, man. Especially in a competitive setting. I mean, that's why we all do it. Here we go. Seeing a lot of mark kicks here from Incognito. All right, bunch of hatches. Well, he's taking the legs Ooh. off. Legs, the legs. Oh, legs nice little legs parry. Off. Right, what's the option? Whoa, now going for jump backs. Yeah, jump over 50 50. Fang's back turn game also very strong, but nice duck on the down back three and the wall yeah. standing three punish there. Incognito one round away from closing out this set in this race to two. Damn, oh, double wedge. wedge driver in a hatchet. <laughs> Look at B Rich's life bar. That was all lows. Here we go. Nice low parry. Right. B Rich needs it. Gotta take momentum back. Alright, spring up. Are we gonna see a taunt? Oh! oh <laughs> Roll jet up again! And I feel like I wanna call that. That's kind of the cycle of the meta game right there, where that that's just Tekken basics, right? Like Tekken 101. I'm gonna take my plus frames and do my quick launcher. And which is like, you know. At this level of Tekken, you kind of stop seeing those uh, those gameplays. But Incognito just, you know, went all the way around. He's like, you know what? Back to basics. Back one into Jet Uppercut. Eat this. Game over. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, um, I think I think like it's it's something you see. Uh, it's something you see a lot in chess as well. Like I know this analogy is made a lot, guys, but bear with me, right? I'm gonna make it a lot of chess me. talk happening. Uh, there's a lot of chess talk right now. There's a certain program out. There